In this video, we're going to look at discrete dynamical systems where the matrix has a very special form. Then in later videos, we'll see how this material can be used as a tool to look at other matrices. The very special form is this. and a matrix of this form always has complex eigenvalues, A plus or minus Bi. On the complex plane, A plus bi would be graphed like this. And let's take note of this angle because we're going to want to refer to it shortly. We're going to define r equals the square root of a squared plus b squared. And we're getting very slightly ahead of ourselves, but you might already know what this is. This is the length of this line segment. And now we're going to take this matrix and we are going to rewrite it. We're going to pull an R out. So all of these terms in the matrix are going to turn into quotients. And now there's R. Here's A, here's B. All of these quotients are trigonometric expressions. Like A over R is the cosine of this angle. Now, there's no reason you would remember this. It was long ago, but when I first introduced linear transformations and first started talking about the matrices of linear transformations, one of the examples I gave of a linear transformation was rotation. This matrix tricks we saw way back then is a rotation matrix in the sense that rotating but sorry in the sense that multiplying a vector by this rotates it by theta radians in the plane. So now look at a discrete dynamical system. What does multiplying x sub n by a do? Bearing in mind that a is this, well, it does two things. It rotates counterclockwise 
by a seta multiplying by this part of A does that. And then you're multiplying by R as well. That scalar multiplication. So as time passes and we repeatedly multiply by this matrix, we are going to repeatedly rotate and we're going to repeatedly scale. Let's look at an example. And in order to spare you my attempts to draw graphs by hand, I'll go back to the notes. Here's A, here's our initial condition. R ends up being 1.06. That's greater than one. So every time you multiply by R, this vector is getting bigger. And every time you multiply by R, this vector is also rotating by some angle. So what you should see is something like that, which that's actually, here we go, which is what we do see. We see a spiraling out with every um, multiplication by A, these values are getting further away from the origin. Meanwhile, they're also rotating counterclockwise to create this spiral. Okay, that's all very well, but most matrices clearly don't have that special form. In the next video, we'll see how this material can be used to study arbitrary complex eigenvalues.